On December 30th of 2019, last year, also known as one week ago, Dr. Ian Cutris got a chance to have an interview with Mark Papermaster. And as usual, many interesting things were discussed. Manufacturing partnerships, Zen 3 performance expectations, and memory packaging. But I think the most interesting thing about this article is the apt title. There's more room at the top. Indeed, in the interview, Dr. Ian Cutris asks about their roadmap. They have Zen 2 that feels like it just came out. I just got my 3950X, for instance. And yet we have Zen 3, then Zen 4, then Zen 5. Is this actually sustainable is the question. And Mark Papermaster answers, well, we're on a 12 to 18 month cadence and we do believe it's sustainable. It's what the industry demands from us. That answer, the way he gave it, for me, was very telling. And I should have read this a while ago. I have to admit, recently, I have had my AMD enthusiasm curbed simply because I'd wonder, can they continue to raise the bar, raise expectations time and time again? And at CES, they have, announcing the 3990X. But it's not just about the 3990X. It's about the mentality. Intel was used for so long to dictating to the industry what they would get from them because there's no possible way anyone could usurp Intel's technology advantage. But that mentality led them to ruin, or at, le at least it looks like it will. And AMD's mentality of simply giving people what they want, not what they tell them they want, is what's leading them to success. You see, this is something I touched on heavily in a recent video of mine, the daunting challenge of Intel catching up to AMD in a few years. It's not just about where they are now, but where AMD should be in a couple of years. So in many ways, for AMD, it's not even about being 5% faster, 10% faster, or even 100% faster than Intel. For AMD, it's about being 100% faster than themselves every few years. There is more room at the top, and they demonstrated what AMD is adding to the top today at their CES keynote. So yeah, I just watched AMD's CES 2020 keynote. And what are my thoughts? Well, the funny thing is, actually, there are two things that just don't surprise me anymore, and it started to amazed me how unsurprised I was by these things. Number one was the immense cockiness of Lisa Sue. I swear she has more swagger every time she walks on stage. I thought it was almost too much the rock concert they played as she walked out, but I guess she's the rock star of Silicon now, uh, at least when it comes to most of us dorks. And number two, though, is how unsurprised I was that a new AMD product is going to blow away the competition when it's a CPU. Uh, they had multiple products announced that should be just really scary for Intel. The first one being the Ryzen 7 4800U, a CPU that should usher in a level of performance and thin and light laptops that I have been waiting for, well, it feels like forever now. I mean, yes, it was nice when KB Lake R and Zen 1 brought decent quad cores to you know, thin and lights, um, and they've innovated on them, you know, like 20% per year since, at least Intel has, and AMD has brought their Zen Plus, you know, derivatives. But in that is it's not 2017 anymore. In 2020, 8 Threads is starting to feel a little slow with, I'm just, I've become spoiled with multitasking, with zippiness, with speed. And seeing AMD bring out these, like the, the Asus Zephyrus gaming laptop that truly looks, well, frankly, like what we would have called a netbook just a decade ago, and double the performance in the same wattage of the competition, while also finally, because it's Zen 2, bringing superior single-threaded performance. That's incredible. And the biggest surprise about this APU for me actually was the fact that the Vega graphics supposedly are going to be more of a hybrid between Vega and RDNA and IPC, saying that they'll bring 50% more performance per compute unit compared to previous gen Vega APUs. So I guess that's it then. I expect this APU to be at about RX 560 performance levels. At least I hope so. And 
doing that in something that is between 15 to, or if they, you know, unlock it in a slightly thicker net notebook, a 45 watt package, it, it's just finally we have it. Here's your thin and light. Here's your netbook. Play the latest games in 1080p. You're not maximum out, but that's what you got. And what really excites me is what AMD will have coming out next year when they iterate on this with a full RDNA APU that also has Zen 3. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. That was incredible. Let's also talk about the other incredible release of this evening. Threadripper. We all knew it was going to be announced at this, you know, the 3990X. But, you know, just seeing how much more performance it has when you actually put it side by side with a dual Xeon setup that is still 30, 20 to 30 percent weaker it, it and costs 20 grand versus a four grand CPU. If it wasn't bad enough to show the 3950X trouncing desktop competition, they then added insult to injury when they needed three screens to make the chart fit for the new 3990X. Yeah, this is how bad things are. We have AMD with a four grand desktop, super expensive, but nonetheless desktop processor beating Intel's $20,000 server setups. And the reason I started this video with that Anantech article really was just to highlight that this is what's out now, people. Zen 3 is coming in within a year, and it will not be Zen 2 Plus. They're not done. They're not done adding cores. They're not done adding IPC. They're not done adding features. And rest assured, I've reached out to some people. Intel isn't sitting still either. But I don't see a good response this year when it's already this bad. And I really do worry about what they'll be able to do in a year or so. Yep, I've talked about it before in other videos. Intel's got stuff coming, but it's all about timing. Saying things like they just got to get to 7 nanometer in 2022 isn't good enough. Right now is the problem. And right now, Intel is forced to do things like buy AMD setups to test their Gen 4 SSD Optane drives and watch as a one-fifth the cost single package destroys a dual Xeon setup. And that's all I really have to say about the CPU releases. They look a bit more impressive than I expected, but I'm not really surprised when AMD CPUs overperform expectations. That APU should be, well, terrifying to Intel, and I pretty much doubt Tiger Lake will even be as good as it. However, Tiger Lake should be good, so we'll just have to see. But speaking of Intel, I'm not going to watch their keynote tonight. I'd rather get enough sleep than cover what I know is going to be there. If they're going to show off Comet Lake almost without a doubt, it'll be better. It will be better than Coffee Lake. It will. More efficient, more cores, higher clocks. I know. But guess what? It's still on 14 nanometer. There will still be new security vulnerabilities that come out. It will not have Gen 4 uh, support for PCIe. And frankly, I'm just not that interested. Um, I guess other things to look for in the Intel... Uh, press conference that's probably going on right now when this video ends up coming out is some more information about their GPUs. Although I don't expect a giant explosion of information quite yet. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll sneak another video in about the Intel press conference sooner rather than later. But the last thing to talk about is, speaking of GPUs, the 5600 XT. Yeah, it's fine at $280. And for me... I think the best thing you can say about this 1660 Super competitor that is, you know, a little more expensive, but will without a doubt crush it. Um, you know, probably come in, you know, within 5-10% of the 2060 while being 20% cheaper, is that this should finally create some downward pressure in the $200 to $300 region. There's no longer, you know, like the 5700 XT, then the 5700, which sometimes drifts down to $300, and then you have the 5500 XT that's too expensive. Having these three products there, it acts as a bridge between the 5700 and the 5500 series. And I think that will be more important than people think. But it, it, it acts kind of, you know, it, it does. It creates downward pressure 
on the 5500 because it's putting pressure on the 1600 so that should be good and it means if 5700s ever go out of stock or they start the street price starts going up again there will be a good alternative in the sub 300 dollar region but yeah i'm really not sure what else there is to say you know uh it was an impressive show uh big navi was entirely absent as usual i do think that's mostly because they want the focus to be on their more mobile products i feel like when they show off big navi it's going to be in about a month or two from now and it's going to be in a way that it can have all of the spotlight. At least I hope. I hope that thing's coming out soon. I hope next-gen consoles don't get it before PC gamers. Although that certainly happened before. Anyways, yep, that's my thoughts right now on CES. Listen to the new Broken Silicon coming out soon. It was recorded before CES. I'll be talking with Cortex on the following Broken Silicon episode about what we thought and when I've had more time to think about all of it. Please like, subscribe, share. The patrons make all of this possible. And check out my other videos, you know? All right. Thank you.